Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are from Group 5, and today we are going to present the key metrics of Netflix. As many people know, Netflix is a streaming service with subscription. It has a variety of content of movies and TV shows for the members to enjoy. Netflix does not have commercial, and uh, the streaming shows don't have to be online. And there's different content for different regions. So when you watch in France or Singapore, they have different available shows in a different time. Netflix first started as a video leasing company, but then evolved to streaming company once the internet spread around the world. It has grown tremendously over the years. Netflix is widely available around the world, as you can see on the map, with exceptions of China, North Korea, Crimea, and Syria. To adjust to the high variety customers around the world, Netflix created special pricing plans for each region. This is the comparison between Indonesia and USA pricing plan. As you can see, there are four plans for Indonesia, including the mobile plan. Netflix saw that Indonesians prefer to watch from their mobile devices and created a special plan. While the USA plan is based for other plans, the plan have a basic, standard, and premium that caters to a different customer pools. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about uh, the metrics that are used by uh, Netflix. So the first uh, metrics is uh, called the valued hours. So uh, Netflix uh, evaluate their shows by using a valued hours matrix that consists of three viewers categories, which are uh, starters, watchers, and completers. And uh, this metric uh, is used is measured by uh, the time spent by people in a single show. They use these three uh, categories to decide uh, either a show is worth uh, renewing or uh, should be removed. So uh, hey, the hello. first uh, matrix is starters, uh, which includes uh, households that watch two minutes of a film or uh, one episode. And uh, the second category would be the completers, uh, which includes households that watch 90% of a film or season of a series. And then uh, these first two metrics uh, are used by producers and directors to have broader understanding of how members uh, engage with their title from start to finish. And then the last uh, category would be the watchers, which is uh, households that watch 70% uh, of a film or single episode of a series. And this category is uh, used to be included in quarterly earning let letter to shareholders and to be shared to uh, public. And uh, this metric is also used to tout uh, record breaking series like for instance, uh, Netflix announced that Stranger Things third season became the most uh, watched season uh, to date with uh, 64 million member households. Next, please. And then uh, the second metric uh, is uh, called enjoyment. Uh, this metric is used to predict the likelihood of someone satisfied with a certain show. And uh, this metric is uh, measured by the thumbs up or thumbs down given by people at the end of the movie. Next is the customer acquisitions. Uh, Netflix spend um, a lot of money on marketing such as uh the first one is offering first month for free to any new customer and they pay 60 16 uh dollar for every customer they bring in um another one is they also spend two dollars for every click for their google adwords uh, campaign so how how did they uh, really count off the uh, really count the customer acquisition cost uh, the cost to obtain new Netflix subscriber can be estimated by dividing the amount spent on marketing by the number of the new acquired uh, customer acquisition cost, also called as um, marketing rotation cost. Next. Uh, here is the marketing expenses of Netflix. Uh, 
and the marketing acquisition cost, which is uh, very high. Uh, they also they also uh, consider the churn rate, uh, and then uh, they count the marketing MAC and MRC. Uh, so the last matrix is customer lifetime value. CLV is an estimation profitability of one customer over their relationship with the company in which sum the accumulation uh, of the discount future profit over the lifetime of the customer minus the customer acquiring cost. So for uh, in this case, uh, Netflix charge less per year than per month which allow uh, Netflix to lose some money in the short run while make up the money plus more in the long run. Moreover, Netflix also track each individual action and preference to determine steps to cause them to engage more and later reduce their churn level to 4%. Next. So uh, for the calculation presented, it is based on the total streaming data from Netflix 2017 income statement and resulted the CLV to be 39.36 US dollar. Next. Okay, so in conclusion, we learned several things uh, def defined from the key intakes we take from the this Netflix case. First is key metrics. Uh, we learned that key metrics is basically a measurable value that shows a progress of a company's business or innovation goals. It can be a lot of things. From this case, we learned that it can be not so generic key metrics commonly found in most businesses. As long as it is measurable and is able to give insights uh, related to the business or innovation, it can be used. Next, we learned how Netflix metrics has proven to help them develop strategies such as determining marketing strategies, creating movies, all in order to grow their business and features. Uh, we also see customer lifetime value. Uh, this is one of the most influential Netflix metrics and is also unique regarding how Netflix used this information. Um, as explained before, this, is, uh, this particular metric actually determined uh, and plan Netflix business model along its spendings and cost in order to achieve the most profit. Uh, finally, we learn the importance of knowing exactly the numbers down to the last penny. Um, by knowing accurate information, Netflix were never afraid to spend money on cost and plans since they are sure of their metrics analysis. So those are the things we learned from this case and that is all from us. Thank you.